What's up, everybody? This is a follow-up episode from the last one. Me and Anthony kind of just did a twofer. We recorded one and then uh, recorded one right after that, that uh, basically, podcast. And uh, just wanted to kind of get the podcast bank going again. So this is a follow-up podcast literally right after the one that we just recorded. And uh, it's going over basically what would you consider going through your gear list, going through your experience as a hunter. What would you consider is holding you back from becoming a better hunter what is holding you back from from becoming having better woodsmanship skills maybe having better stalking skills better tracking skills better uh you know understanding of an animal you know what what is preventing you from getting to that next level as a hunter do you even want to hit that next level and and what kind of dynamics can you change of your hunt hunting the same animals but what can you change to maybe get a different experience or a better experience and uh, i i thought this was a great um, topic. It's been on my heart for a while. And uh, Anthony being uh, a trad hunter and, and having experience with that, I thought would bring a great uh, perspective into the conversation. So it really made for uh, a great dynamic and perspective. And I appreciated his thoughts and stuff. And, and I think he hit it on the nail with the head, uh, what he brought to the conversation. And I uh, really hope that you guys give feedback and uh, definitely want to hear what you guys think. What do you think is a crutch? What do you think, you know, based on your setups, um, how can you improve and, and get better in the areas with your gear? So, as always, guys, appreciate you listening. I'll see you at the end. Bye. All right, guys, welcome back to the show. This is uh, basically a follow up podcast to the Getting Back In It podcast that we just did, episode. Uh, this is one that I've had on my heart for a while because we, we kind of touched on it in the last episode where technology is it, it's coming. It's here. It's coming. It's making it more lethal, more effective as hunters. And at what point do you cross that line for you personally where you're just going to say, you know what, I'm going to stick with this because – it's not going to be fair. It's not going to give me the experience I want. It's just not going to make me a better hunter. Mm -hmm. So uh, I kind of wanted to go through our equipment lists and pick out which ones benefit us as a um, – makes us more capable um, but doesn't help actually help us directly kill an animal versus what is over and above where I'm going to kill something way farther, way easier because of that. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So, for example – um, a thousand yard muzzle loader. Yeah, which we just talked about. Yeah. Which you just talked about. It literally has a casing and it has a primer in the casing that. You, <laughs> it's a rifle. It's a rifle, basically. And, uh, you know, what, if that scratches somebody wrong, man, it is what it is. It's. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if you're doing it legally, okay. I mean. Cool. Cool. Do more, it during I rifle mean, season. Yeah, more power to you, yeah. I guess. But that's not what that weapon was. And you can say that for archery, you can say that for rifles. You can. You can say it for anything. You can. I mean, things have gotten better and more efficient, but it's just like... Right. That's part of the thing that's always drawn me to archery was I have to be close. Right. And now you got guys shooting stuff at 120 yards, 130 yards with a bow. Which more happens. I mean... Which happens. If you're capable and you put the work in, I'm not judging you. But that's it's not for me. That's not that's not for me either. Mm -hmm. And I think the important thing starting this thing off here is is to say that's not for me. But if you want to do that, mm -hmm. yeah, do, like do said, the if, shit if out you, of it. If, I don't care if you put the work in. Right. The technology's there. The weapon's efficient enough. If you right. want to shoot a deer at 130 yards with a bow, do it. Right. I mean, if if you've done the work, but it's just that's not what I want to do. Right. So, I'm not judging you, but that's not what I. I'm about. So. I think I got to turn you up a little bit. You're not very loud. Yeah, sometimes that happens. <laughs> Each beer, you get a little quieter. <laughs> yeah. Radio voice, dude. There you go. <laughs> yeah, take a big swig there. <laughs> now you're wearing it. Oh Jesus, this is gonna be a good podcast. Please. Okay, so so get me up in two hours. Then yeah, we'll... right. Uh, so basically. I want to start off with uh, things that I think that, like the 1,000-yard muzzleloader, where did that even come from? Was there a need? 
for a muzzleloader, I have no idea because I don't, I don't muzzleloader hunt. Right. Um, I, that's just from watching TV. Right. It was like, oh, we're on this muzzleloader tag. It was an elk tag, and I'm, I started watching it, and then they they do their little like range thing, you know, it's right. like this far, and it was like nine hundred something yards, and I'm like. Right. Pretty sure they said muzzleloader. <laughs> right. And they shoot it, I mean, and they dump it. I mean, we're talking one and done. A clean, ethical Yeah, clean, kill. awesome, good shot. Yeah. I mean, the animal doesn't even flinch. Right. But it's like, uh, that was a muzzleloader? <laughs> See, I, I feel... When I think of muzzleloader, I think of like 150. Dude, that's a long shot. Yeah, now you got bows doing 150. Yeah. And muzzleloader's doing 1,000, and guys shooting things with a rifle at 2,000. It's like, and I get it that just things have advanced. Right. But I feel like some of these products are coming out in in a need to fill a loophole in regulations. And I say that without a lot of shit to be able to back that up. Mm-hmm. Just knowing people who probably want to put really big animals on the ground but hunt during the best times of year, they're going to use that kind of product. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, maybe a muzzleloader, they have a, like a, maybe a rut muzzleloader hunt. Or they have some sort of muzzleloader hunt that it's a better hunt because it's a harder weapon. But then you're getting this thousand yard muzzleloader and basically carrying a rifle out in the woods, mm-hmm. but you're hunting in a better time of year. That's and I'm just talking from Oregon standpoint as far as like right weapon to time of season and stuff, everything. But yeah, so like you get a rifle tag, and. Not now, but say 20 years ago, okay, I've got a rifle tag. I mm-hmm. can shoot 400 yards, 500 yards, but it's the worst time of year. You right. know, like if you even find elk, you you did something. <laughs> you know, right. and then like September, okay, I'm seeing elk every day, but I'm seeing them at 300 yards or 200 yards. Right. And I've got a bow that can only shoot 45 yards. Right. And then now it's like now you can freaking launch an arrow at 100 and something yards. Yeah. Um, efficiently. Right. So, well, you know, the the thousand yard muzzleloader, I know we're making fun of it. I kind of making fun of it. I mean, I am. It's like, where did that even come from? Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it, I don't judge anybody that uses that because I think a thousand yard muzzleloader is cooler than shit. That's pretty cool. But mm-hmm. I don't feel that. I feel like it's a hybrid because mm-hmm. you have a freaking casing. You have the only difference between that and a rifle is instead of loading it on it, it, your press at home, you're doing it in your barrel in the field. Yeah. Right? Which I get. That's a muzzleloader. You load it through the barrel. First off, that sounds sketchy. <laughs> kind of weird, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I saw pictures of it. I, I kind of read a little bit of the description. Aaron was telling me about it. And I may be off base here, but basically it's it's a it's a it's to me it's a hybrid mm-hmm. between that. And you know, we have crossbows which can shoot pretty easily hundred yards. Um and with four hundred feet per second. Four hundred feet yeah, I mean Granted, we can't use I those think, in Oregon. I, I don't know. I yeah, don't with know three oh, way over three hundred. Mm-hmm. Way. I mean, some of them are I think four twenty. Um, but you know, you're shooting. I don't even think you can use those. I know for a fact you can't use those in Oregon for bow hunting. You might be able to use them during archery I, season I, I or think, uh, rifle season. I don't think you can use them. Period. I I, I agree Oregon. with that. I don't think you can. Period. I I imagine for turkeys you probably can. Probably, you can use expandables but, for turkeys prior to them becoming legal for yeah. a big game. Uh, but so. For the gear that I have, I started off with the rifle hunting, Mm -hmm. and then it just wasn't doing it for me anymore. It was just to go out, pull the trigger, you're done. Mm -hmm. In in, in my case, it was go out, pull the trigger, miss that one, go (laughs) go miss another one, go miss it. So for me, it was my dad always bow hunted, Uh and then when me and my brothers got to the age of hunting, he went back to rifle hunting Mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And then so I always had that desire to bow hunt, and then he let me start shooting a little bit, and then I started rifle hunting. And just what you're saying, I mean, in my first few years of rifle hunting for blacktails, uh-huh. it was nice four-point, nice four-point, nice four-point, nice four-point. And that sounds, I guess, um, kind well, of arrogant, dude, I guess. If it happened, it happened. Yeah, I mean, you and, shouldn't be ashamed of your yeah, success. Yeah, and to me, after like the fourth one, uh-huh. I was like this. I mean, it was sweet, and I was always excited. Yeah. But it was just. I'm, I, it's, I've, it's, I want that better experience. Right. And that's when I went to bow hunting. Like my first deer with a bow was like a 15 inch three point black tail, mm-hmm. like pencil horn, real thin, real symmetrical, mm-hmm. but just a pencil horn, little three point. And you'd have swore I just shot a 160 inch black tail. Cause I mean, I was hooting <laughs> and hollering. I was so excited. Uh, and I get that way every time Yeah, with a bow. 
with a rifle. Last buck I shot with a rifle. I shot it, watched it die, walked over. Cool. Right. I mean, I just, it was nothing. I, I've got a... Uh, it just doesn't do it for me. I've got a camcord video that barely works. Um, depends what you're using it on. But of me killing my first spike. And it's just right... It's like... The, the footage starts like right after I shot. And then I saw the deer um, with the arrow right behind the shoulder. And it's it's like dug into the opposite shoulder. So like like 10 inches of the shafts hanging out of it. Mm-hmm. And then I see it pile up. It's a spike, like a toe head. And uh, I'm like ecstatic. Like I could barely control my emotions. Like just so pumped. And I'd missed, that was the first year that I had my range finder. And uh, I had missed like six bucks. And I'd missed some like 120 class blacktails that year mm-hmm. um and that spike i'm like i i just i can't pass it up like i gotta i gotta do this i started mm-hmm. off to kill a buck that was the most proud animal i've ever taken mm-hmm. up until the bull i killed this year and it was a freaking spike yep it was a spike and i got it on video and i had my best friend and my brother there at the time and i do i remember it so vividly like that's a whole and, different experience than going out and just... And I don't want to take away from rifle hunters or anything, but it's like... No. You know, my father-in-law is a big rifle hunter, and right. he's a successful one. He's killed some big animals mm-hmm. um, consistently these last, like, five, six years, actually. And we've talked about it. He's like, oh, I get it. You know, they bugle, and that's cool and stuff. And I'm like, no, it's not just that. Like, dude, when you can count how many times they've blinked if you want to, it's way different than shooting from 700 yards away. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, you killed that nice animal, but... That thing was oblivious to you being there. You don't have to worry about the wind. You don't have to worry about anything. When I'm close enough, I can see the drool come out of his mouth. Right. I can, if I, like I said, if I wanted to, I could count how many times he's blinked. That's how close I am to him. Mm -hmm. That's a totally different thing. It is. You walk away from a season where you don't punch a tag, but you had like encounters like that over and over and over. It's a success all on its own. Well, I, I liken it to, okay, so let's pretend that we're getting tickets to the Super Bowl. Is is front row, 50-yard line, more expensive than a nosebleed? Mm-hmm. Okay. Why? Because you're closer. It's a and... co- completely different experience. Mm-hmm. You are right there. And I'm not saying that rifle hunters are cheapening their experience, but I'm just saying if they're getting what they want out of rifle hunting, more power to them. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. My dad, my whole family is rifle hunted for as long as weavers have been a weaver, you know, mm-hmm. like, right. There's nothing wrong with, I still, <clears throat> my, one of my, woo, wrong pipe. Uh, I still get, uh, super excited about mule deer rifle. Like it's right up there with, um, with elk with a bow for me. I don't know why it just grinds my gear. I love it. And so when I'm saying stuff about this for rifle, I get the smells, I get the weather, I get the deer, I get, just the way they act, I just love that time of year mm-hmm. versus a lazy, you know, velvety buck that's just doesn't really have care in the world. You know, these things are they they present their own challenge at that time of year, and uh, you know, I I love that aspect of rifle hunting. So I I still rifle hunt. However, um, I'm going to start doing that out of state because I I want to rifle or want to bow hunt Oregon more. Yeah, if I go out of state this year, it'll be with a rifle. Yeah, and um, if I don't fill my tag with a rifle, which I'm picky when I go out of state, I'll go back with a bow. Mm-hmm. You know, and if I go back with the bow this year, I'm killing something. I'm not going to be passing these, you know, twenty inch four points up. I'm gonna I'm gonna smoke the first four point I see. Um, but that's a different experience, and so like I basically I'm just covering my ass here because when we get into this thing, it's going to sound like we're bashing on people. We're really not. Mm-hmm. We we really aren't. You and I both kill a lot of animals with a rifle. As douchey as that may sound, we've we've had plenty. Of, it's not hard to go kill a black tail with a rifle. I don't think it is. Just a legal buck. Well, just a legal buck. Just a legal buck. If if you know, just go glass a unit <laughs> and sit there. So yeah, um, is that my phone or your phone? Yours. Oh Jesus. Um, I put mine on silent because I'm a professional. I'm I'm still figuring it out. Um, so a guy I work with, we talked about this. Like, you want to go kill a black tail? You know, you see these people that, well, I, I haven't even seen a buck all season. Because you're, <laughs> you're not looking or I you're just road hunting. I like, literally don't understand that. Even if you're road hunting, you could, you'd still see a deer. I don't get it. Because it's like, go to any unit and you're going to find deer. Yeah. Like, or for the most part. I, I mean, yeah. there's so much, like, that thing, that piece of ground is so broke up. Mm-hmm. You can't look at it. You'll see it all the time. 
people go and look at it for like five minutes. Mm-hmm. Well, I should have seen some, so I'm gone. Dude, I've been sitting on a unit for an hour, and all of a sudden there's three deer right. in a place that I've looked a hundred times. Right. But they just moved from somewhere else, and they put themselves at a spot where, okay, now I can see them, and they're like a sore thumb. But right. you just you just got to look. They're there. I mean. No, I totally agree. So what's what's a piece of equipment that you feel makes you more capable? More capable as far as like... That doesn't directly play. Like boots for me would be something that I have to have nice boots. I cannot. Um, my, I, I will, my if we're talking technology-wise? I'd say boots is technology. Boots, yes. But for me, I'd say the biggest tool mm-hmm. for me that it's like it it helps me, but it doesn't do the job necessarily. Right. Onyx maps. <laughs> <laughs> like... Dude, that is that has put me in places where I've gotten to hunt mm, that I would have never gone. Same here. And I didn't even think it, about it that. doesn't it doesn't do the job for you. You still have to go there, do your work, do the work, find the animals, get the job done. That's true. But it puts you it has put me in places that I would never have stepped foot in. <sighs> just Son because of a gun. over there over there one. is private, I bet. Yeah. So I'll never go over there. Right. You get on Onyx, pff, no. That's you know, that's, true. that's a thousand acres over there that I can be on. Mm-hmm. We hunted a spot for it. a few years and we never hunted this one unit. We just, because we didn't know who owned it. We're like, mm-hmm. okay, we're not hunting that. There's deer in there every time, but we're not hunting that. Well, I, uh, before Onyx, I called, uh, the landowner, uh, as a timber owner. I'm like, dude, we own that. And then also we own over a thousand acres on the other side that you can hunt too. You're welcome mm-hmm. to hunt all that. Like just by one phone call, I expanded an area that we'd hunted for a couple of years and I guarantee we would have filled tags in that unit, but it expanded like 200% of what we were hunting. Onyx does that with literally the click of a finger. Now you don't have to make a phone call. So I totally agree with that one. That that's a really good point. So that's one that it does help your success rate. It's 100% technology, but does not pull the trigger. Does not make your projectile any more accurate. Doesn't find the animal. Doesn't find the animal. Um, although I would I would argue that it, it will increase your search time down, like to oh, finding yeah. the animals. Oh yeah, because I mean you can get on there and find you know areas that look good that you want to go look at and get right. all these little waypoints. Where before you just had to go out in the woods and just be there and spend <laughs> waste all this time. Right. You know. So I mean it does help, but yeah, that would be. I would say the biggest one, and I, I mean, I've never even talked to the guys at Onyx. I don't know them, so I don't. Yeah, I've I just, talked I to a couple pay of them. So. Yeah, yeah. We like, granted, we are not sponsored by no, anybody. That was the that was uh, one of the best thirty dollars I've ever spent yeah, in my life. That, 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 I use this word quite a bit. Game changer. That was a game changer for me. Yeah. And it so has get been this. For many so, years. so I just came back from the Dominican Republic. Yeah. Okay. Other side of the world. Mm-hmm. I got Wi-Fi. And I turned on Onyx just to see. <laughs> that thing is so accurate. It saw the pool I was. I mean, I was sitting next to a pool uh-huh. in a resort, and it knew exactly where I was instantly. Really? It put me literally to a T where I was standing, and I'm like, "Holy <laughs> crap!" Well, it's basically Google Maps with with. Yeah, but I've only paid for Oregon, so really, mm, yeah, really, you shouldn't. Did they you tell know, you who owned it? Uh, I didn't look at that. Uh, see, I bet that's where it would have came up short. <laughs> oh yeah, Jeez, on X Maps. Get, God, you can only get track your Dominican the world. Republic shit together on X Maps. I was um, really impressed by it. <laughs> <laughs> that that's probably going to be the winner. The whole episode is is that tool right there. Mm-hmm. Um, I say something for me would be my pack. Yeah, I can go uh, carry more shit. I can stay uh, out longer. I can pack way more way more with that pack than just a cheap cabela's pack or a, basically a school backpack so i'm i've been running the same pack for quite a while your eberly eberly stock yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go to exo this year mm. um I just, <laughs> you've wore mine haven't you you tried it out when, so. when you had me. Yours are Ryan's. One dude, the it's I, like, I've, I've put them on. Literally, I feel like I'm carrying half the weight. Mm-hmm. Or I like I can carry 40% more or something and, like and that. And that's what I'm excited about. Um, You're already crazy with your Everly stock, dude. Yeah. I've literally packed out half an elk. That's a rosy. Yeah. Rosy. Not like and, a little. And not like on a flat road. No. So, yeah. <laughs> I um, work out every day. S- Every day for hours a day on my legs, I still couldn't pack half as much as you. And I, it's just always been that way. I don't know why, but um, 
Uh, yeah, when you stand up and you can hear the bag like stretching and ripping. You're like the Forrest Gump <laughs> of packing elk. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, uh, but yeah, no, that's that's legit for me. That's not something that's going to help me kill and something. I'm, and I'm excited about going to an exo because I can. Uh, it's got the separate meat section. Mm-hmm. So I've always with the Everly stock. Anytime like camp overnight or anything, you got your meat and your camp all in a bag. Mm-hmm. Um. Which you can make work, but it'd be nice to have a section where you can meet and then get camp. Right. So I'm excited about that this coming year. So what do you feel is something that is a crutch? Um I mean you could say technology, but we just use that, but um just that. I mean just I would say my bow. Being able to shoot I mean, it's just the efficiency of the weapon. I mean, and you can't blame companies for striving for that you can't blame people for getting good with that and and using it Mm -hmm. i mean it's there why wouldn't you right um but it it is a crutch you know i mean 30 years ago you couldn't shoot past 45 yards now you got people shooting stuff at 130 yards i mean right that that's a crutch to me um i agree because like i I said it's efficient and you can do it it's fine but right that's a crutch. I mean, you don't have to get as close. Right. You can say that with anything. Bow, rifle, muzzleloader. That's a it's a crutch. Let's use so. it like a spear. Yeah. No Tim Wells. <laughs> so. I would say because for me, my my need to fill the tag is is very strong still. Like I, I if I go on a hunt, like it's not all about filling a tag. And I know the Fred Bear quote and all that stuff. And I totally agree with it. But for me. I I don't have to, but it, the urge is so strong to come back with meat on mm-hmm. my back and also have, a, say if I'm deer hunting, to also have a big buck is very, very high for me. Bulls, I'll kill the first spike that walks out. I don't care. I'm not mm-hmm. that good yet. I'm not even that good. I mean, I misjudged that buck I shot this year by a lot. But um, like the need to kill a quality animal overshadows the need to get the experience of um let's let's just put it this way i will use my technology to kill shit farther than i would if i was trying to go after the experience if you know what i'm saying because mm-hmm. um, i shot i shot that buck long ways this year and I, I didn't care like i think with if you give me that with a few more years i'm gonna, probably going to go after the experience like i want to get closer to that animal. so i i used to um have that urge like i have to come home with an animal yeah and if i don't that you know i failed yeah um i was really bad about that and anymore i just remind myself like that's it's really not why you're here because if i needed the meat right i would just go to the, i mean with what you spend in hunting right i could buy a whole beef oh for you sure you know what i mean so like for that sure. that's not why i mean and yeah. i love the meat and it's awesome yeah and it is a bigger reward but that's if I needed the meat, I, this isn't 1890. Like I don't need the, I don't need the meat. Like I want it. Yeah, I want it. Right. So I used to be really bad about that of having to. I gotta fill my tag. I gotta fill my tag. And now, I don't really get that urge anymore. You put um, that thing closer to your mouth. There. There you go. Um. There. Now I can hear you. I want to for sure. I mean, I I want to fill my tag. Right. But. Well, I I would rather get the experience out of it. I mean, like this year with Shelby's Mount Emily, we didn't fill that tag, and that this last year was probably the best elk season I've ever had. Dude, it was amazing. We didn't yeah. even fill the tag, like you said. Yep. I mean, yeah. Granted, we passed on bulls and stuff, but it was just the just the experience. Mm-hmm. I mean, it made it best season I've ever had. Yeah. So same here. Like that first year, Mitch and I went over to Eastern Oregon. I talked about it. Neither of us killed anything. We both had opportunities. Mm-hmm. It's still my favorite year I've ever gone over there. Yep. I mean, it was just it was just stupid how cool it was. Be- six bulls bugle every time you'd bugle back yeah. every every morning, and it was it was just crazy. It was just insane. I've never seen anything yeah. like so, that. Me and Chase hunted uh, the northeast corner of Oregon for like I think two years, mm-hmm. and uh, we took Ryan over there for the first time. And we just happened to get a really good deer. And it was just like that. You bugle, and it was like pickable. 
Mm. I mean, they were just everywhere. And he still says that that was my best year. You know, that was my most yeah. that was my most favorite most year. Most memorable. And uh let's see. I missed a bull, Chase missed a bull, <laughs> and Ryan wounded a bull. <sighs> but it was still his favorite year cuz I mean, it was literally just action all the time, you know, right. close call after close call, just working bulls and we came home empty-handed. Right. So I just for for the deer, I I've had way more success early on and more consistently than the elk and that's why i'm at a different place you know, like i for me it's it's the need to kill a big buck is is outweighs the meat because i will go home empty-handed i don't care with mm-hmm. with a deer just i want that the experience of hunting a more mature buck you get away with less and, and granted okay here's another thing for uh for you know for the guys that that trad hunt you know, I'm sure they could go out and kill a little, a, a buck, you know, or a, a compound guy, but you're getting a whole different experience. I feel like if you're shooting just little tiny fo- spikes and fork and horns with a bow, but then you up your game to shooting maybe a five to seven year old blacktail, big buck, you're getting a completely different experience than you are killing that fork and horn. That's just going to let you shoot them. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to really work extremely hard, get a little bit lucky to kill that bigger, mature blacktail. That's a completely different experience but, than killing a fork and horn. Yeah, with blacktails, it's almost a bad example because they are. A, I mean, they're yeah. like or mule, what's the use mule doing then? Because mm-hmm. that I mean, you're going to get a, a mule buck's going to an older buck's going to position himself in a better spot. He's going to lay in a yeah, better he, spot. He's, he's gonna, been around the block. He's been around the block. He's been hunted. Probably been shot at. Yeah, he's probably been shot. That's at, a so. different. That's a different animal than shooting. You know, like a buck that Mitch killed this year who just. Stood right off the road and let him mm-hmm. let him smoke it, you know. Well, my buck this year, you know, he's a a three point. He was three by three, and I don't know, he was like seventeen or so wide. I think is what he was. Yeah. But he was young. He was young. Yeah. So was my buck. And he ran and then stopped and looked at me and just let me shoot him. Yeah. I mean, mine mine wasn't well. <laughs> you know, we're hunting the deer aren't that educated, but <laughs> you know, so even the buck yeah. I shot wasn't. I, I can honestly say it wasn't. Like I'm an amazing hunter. I just we spotted it, got off the road, and shot. I mean, that's pretty much all it was. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it, even though it was, it was a good buck, it it didn't scratch that itch because I didn't feel like I earned it. You know, mm-hmm. like it just didn't happen how I wanted it to. So now I'm starting to get you know the need to kill that big buck, but also start making it harder on myself because that's the farthest I've ever shot a deer, and I'm not even proud that I shot it that far. You know, a lot of guys are like, oh, what's your farthest bow kill? Like it's a my thing is like, what's your closest bow kill? Like, mm-hmm. I, a ten yard kill versus a hundred yard kill is way more impressive to me. Mm-hmm. So, I just I'm starting to make that transition into you know making it harder on myself. Yeah, because like I said, I mean, it all comes down to it. you don't need the meat, right? Because if, if you needed it, you wouldn't go hunting. You would just right. You would just buy the meat because it's cheaper. So, so I'd say a bow is a crutch for me right now, even though. Like a compound bow is the bows that we're using. The compound bow right now for me is a crutch because I don't need it to go out and be successful with with a deer. Mm-hmm. And for the the bulls that we have shot, we could they were all within recurve range. Um, besides, besides the one I lost two years ago, I say for the most part, every bull we've shot and killed and recovered <laughs> has been recurve range. Yeah. Um, some of them maybe stretch that a little bit. But still, well within recurve range. Yeah, that bull this um, year was seventeen, maybe maybe eighteen yards. I shot. That's, mm-hmm. that's yeah. That's a that's a um, slam dunk. Hell, a bull I missed two years ago was only. I mean, dude, yeah, twenty seven yards. That's um, with a compound though, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh. And I was shooting my recurve mostly. Lights that was, out. Yeah. That was like at the beginning of that uh-huh. phase, and I was killing it, and I. Didn't take it that day because I'm like, oh, I'm just going to take my compound. I'm not sure yet. Right. Wish I would have took it. I, I remember pr- telling I you, like, I think if you would have had bowl. your recurve, it, that, that bull would have been dead. Mm-hmm. There's been times when if I would have had my bow instead of a gun in my hands, that, that 180 class buck would have been dead. I've mentioned that buck a few times on this podcast. I yeah, just, I just garbage with a gun. but Yeah, and at the time with a compound, I just wasn't shooting good and yeah. uh, emotions and everything got involved and... Because that's one thing um, I think I've said it on here before is all the close calls I've had with the recurve, elk and deer now, Mm -hmm. my emotions don't really get involved. Hmm. Like, I just stay rock steady. Like, with with a compound, with an elk, 
if I think I'm getting ready to shoot, my knees are about <laughs> clanking together. <laughs> my shoulders are shaking so bad. Really? You know, I, I can hardly hold myself together. With a recurve, every time I've gotten that spot, I'm just rock salt like I'm at the range. Interesting. Going to shoot a bag. I don't know what it is, but that's how I've always been with it. And like I said, I've had close calls with elk and deer now with that thing. And I don't know what it is, but that's hmm. – so. That that bull I missed a few years ago. I think he'd have been dead with a recurve. Really? Yeah. What do you think about rangefinders it being a crutch? For sure. I mean, oh. I mean, you can you can say anything's a crutch, but I mean they are. But I use one. I mean, I use one. I was talking to why somebody the other you? day about it. It makes you it. more efficient. I mean, I tell you right now, like there'd be a lot more living animals out there right now if I if I wasn't carrying a rangefinder with me. A buck this year, I wouldn't. I would have even attempted the shot because I wouldn't have known. I would have said. 70 yards and then mm-hmm. hit low so I mean, there'd be a lot more i i would have eaten a lot more tags and missed a lot more shots without a range fire we'll put it that way yeah um but that's one of those things i think it just makes you more ethical i agree but at the same time when you work at it you can really tell because like mm-hmm. when you were shooting trout all the time and then uh we both placed it at that one bow shoot you were like after i'd shoot I'm like dude you're adding five yards to mm-hmm. every target. Yeah. <laughs> Stop doing that. Yep. I knew what you were doing every time. Cause yeah. Because I dial. shot it for 45 and it's yeah. 40 or, you know, whatever it was. Idiot. <laughs> yep. um, so. I, yeah. And back in high school and stuff before I could afford a range finder. Right. I got really good at judging yardage. Exactly. So that's a woodsmanship now, skill. Yeah. Now I'm still pretty good at it, mm-hmm. but not as efficient as I was. Right. I, I rely on that range finder. Right. Same here. I mean, rely is a strong word because mm-hmm. I do. I I I'm not to the point yet where I, where I want to get rid of that because mm-hmm. and I like shooting. Sometimes with animals, I'll even I'll see them like all right, that's forty yards, mm-hmm. but I will still range it, range it. Yeah. Even the, and sometimes I'm spot on. It'll be like within a yard, mm. but I'm still I can't just not. <laughs> I'll see it and I still mm-hmm. just can't not range it before i shoot that i have to well, even that bull i shot this year at 17 i i would doubted myself after i shot i'm like oh dude that's for sure a top pin like those top pin shots you know they're top pin shots mm-hmm. like it's obvious i could see the white you know you, you could see everything you wanted the bull's eyes everything like you're talking about earlier and uh even after like i shot and i covered my arrow i'm like i'm looking back down I'm like god you know the doubt creeps in that was the first animal i shot in years without a without a uh, range finder years mm-hmm. like i couldn't even tell you the last animal i shot without a range finder honestly i don't even that might have been one of the first animals i've ever shot without a range <laughs> finder <laughs> uh no there no there was a couple there was a couple blacktail that were like 22 yards i didn't need a range finder for them but mm-hmm. um so I, I would honestly say that i i that would definitely be a woodsmanship that you can get good at that if you want. Um, I'm just not ready to lose that yet. And the bow is absolutely, and I think I'm I'm getting more to the point of, get, if, like I said in the last episode, getting to the point where I want to shoot either a, a weaker bow or a recurve. Because I, mm-hmm. I could limit myself. If I have a bow that can shoot 80 or 70 or whatever, how far, however far I'm ethical at, I'm going to shoot that far if a shot presents itself because mm-hmm. I want to kill that animal and bring it home. But if I force myself with the recurve, there you go. Yeah, you you have no choice. Right. Um. Yeah. So. I think. What about uh, the Garmin electric bow sights that do the ranging and shit for yeah. you? Yeah. So. I've never put my hands on those, and I've never wanted to. From the second they came out, I thought it was stupid. <laughs> I mean, it's cool technology, but it is cool. It, it is cool technology. I would shoot one for just to play with, but for your hunting, I, no way. I you just would... can't trust electronic. I I try and keep it as simple, stupid. Mm-hmm. And this is coming from a guy that draws the line at a rangefinder. Um, I just couldn't try. I mean, Oregon's a wet, shitty place. Mm-hmm. Come hunting season. That's why I don't like uh, doesn't the side tapes. Be... I don't like side tapes you anymore. Don't? Um, I've never had a problem, but I just yeah, the weather here is so crappy. Mm-hmm. And there's so much brush and everything that I went back to just a fixed pin f- five, you know, five pin sight because it will always be there, you know, unless bolts loosen, it's just 
just what it is. It's five pins. It's there. You can shoot it. Mm -hmm. Um, That's why I went back to that. So something like that, like a Garmin thing in, in this state or anywhere, no thanks. You're relying so much on technology that. Right. Or I think as a whole, just because you can shoot, you know, like like you said, because you can shoot 100, 110, 115 yards. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we we touched on a little bit in the last episode, but the, and I want to say it was Colorado, but some states are looking at making changes to their current seasons because people, the success rates are getting too high. Well, when you got that muzzler shooting 1,000 yards, your yeah. success rate's going to go through the freaking roof. Yeah, same, and same thing with like, Bow shooting same over thing with bows. Same thing with crossbows. Shotguns. I'm surprised. Rifles shooting close to 2,000. I mean. Yeah. Shotguns are getting pretty fancy now, too. Mm-hmm. So. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Numbers will go up. So. What about the, uh, the uh, uh, what's it, the blue chip uh, breadcrumb? There you go. The knock. The knocks? The knock thing. Those things are cool. Those are pretty um, cool. I don't think they would help you kill an animal. Nope. Uh, I think they would help with recovery. Yeah. Um, Which is good because you've already let the arrow go. So, Mm -hmm. but yeah, those things are cool. They're expensive though. Right. Um, But I started saying that years and years ago. It'd be so sweet to have like a knock or something in your arrow (laughs) where you could find out where it went. Right. Well, now they've got it. So I wouldn't really say that's a crutch just because it doesn't, it doesn't help you shoot further. It doesn't put you places, you know. It just helps you. Once the arrow's it's gone, like a, it's it helps like a you get it. Knock. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's really it's just a fancy lighted yeah, knock. Yeah, it's a really cool lighted knock. Expensive lighted knock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, aren't uh, they like thirty bucks a piece or something I, like I, that? I think so. They're thirty or thirty five. They're expensive. They are super expensive. Um, what's another thing that you feel makes you a less hunter that you rely on? Hmm. I mean, if you want to go real primitive, binos. Well, f- <laughs> well mean, no for for where you, for where you're like, it's really hard because there's not a lot of shit that I would consider a crutch. Well, really, any of it is. I mean, if you want to just put yourself you against the animal, yeah, anything you're using is. I mean, binos, spot and scope, right? Modern equipment. I mean, so I guess is where does one draw the line? Because that's true. I mean, you could go out there barefoot and, and get it done. Mm-hmm. Uh, people had to a couple hundred years ago. Right. It was them against the animal. I challenge you to kill something barefoot. This <laughs> Dude, I haven't done with the recurve yet. So. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I I guess that's just up to the person of right. what they want to accomplish. Um, I just feel like if if they're not getting what they're if it's if if the hunt isn't producing isn't filling their their need mm-hmm. then that's a obvious thing of you know maybe not get out of it but maybe change it up mm-hmm. kind of like you and I were talking about the rifle things it just wasn't filling that need it wasn't filling that sense of accomplishment, accomplishment or that justice to the animal because mm-hmm. at some point like I know if I get a black tail tag is coffee is is confident and cocky and douchey as it sounds. I will fill that tag if I want to mm-hmm. on, I'm not going to say it's a mature buck because black tails are hard to hunt. They are. But if you give me a tag, you say, Garrett, go out and kill a buck. I would say probably 50% of the time to 60% of the time when I leave the house, I'll come back with a deer, mm-hmm. a buck, probably a fork and horn, probably a dink, but I'll come back with a deer. Like they're, it, that doesn't do it for me. That doesn't do the population any good. That doesn't do the the herd any good. That doesn't do other hunters, other kids who maybe need that opportunity at that young buck any good. Mm-hmm. You know, the more I the more I hunt, the more like I think about like if I see a little buck. First of all, I feel bad for shooting it because it's it's just. I don't know. I just I, I you really just stand there and look at you like hey, yeah. What just, are you doing, I buddy? I just feel bad, but that could be taking an opportunity from somebody else that needs that that buck mm-hmm. that maybe doesn't have the, the like like when i was experience. say 12 in oregon that's yeah. when you have that the age you have to be to hunt if i was i just wanted to kill a deer yeah if i was coming around the corner or saw a dink shot it and then two minutes after i did there's kid and a dad drive around the corner i'd feel like a piece of shit mm-hmm. like that could have been that kid's buck yeah you know i don't need this i can go out and hunt harder than he can mm-hmm 
it's just not a matter of being good. It's just a matter of being more persistent, more consistent, and hunting harder, and knowing what animals are in the area. Yeah, I uh, for me, I felt more accomplished. I guess. Yeah. Kind of. With unsuccessful hunts with a recurve, than I did successful hunts with a rifle. Really. And, and I don't want to take away from rifle hunters or anything, but I just, you know, you get super close. Say I'm at. 35 yards with a recurve. Right. I'm right there. Um, it's close. It's going to happen. Right. And then it doesn't. That's still a win to me. Like, it was awesome. It was a good experience. I mean, the bull I thought I was going to shoot this year twice, uh, or two different occasional evening and then the next morning. Mm-hmm. Dude, at one point, he was so close. I mean, he was me to you almost. Really? Um, and I would have been that close with the compound, too, just because that's the way everything played out. Uh-huh. But that was an amazing experience. I mean, he was feet from me, and I thought I was going to kill him with a recurve, which is just cool. Yeah. That's insane. That would have been the highlight of your hunting career. Right yeah, there. for real. Yeah. I mean, it would have been. Yeah. So, um, I mean, more primitive makes it more rewarding to me. So the I harder I make it, the more I'm going to feel right. satisfied with it. Well, what about, um, like, for me, it's more of, of um, besting an animal. Like, using my knowledge and my experiences to get the better of an animal when he has all the advantages. Mm-hmm. And if I believe that animal is going to do something, I execute my game plan, and then it comes comes full circle. Mm-hmm. Dude, that to me, not, okay, I'll just put the less I get lucky and the more I rely on experience and 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 good calls and stuff like that to me is becoming more rewarding. I would rather have a smaller buck that I knew what was going to happen. And I'm not saying a small buck. I'm just saying a smaller buck. And I bested that animal in his environment. And Mm -hmm. I got myself in position when he made the, he made the mistake, not me. And I'd rather have that animal and that animal than a bigger buck who made, who, who just, I got completely shit house lucky on like Mm -hmm. that buck did everything right. And I still killed him. Yeah. I want that that's that that does it for me now like there's just so many facets and and angles to this and dimensions to this to this that it's really hard to put your finger on it you know what i'm saying like Mm -hmm. it i guess what i'm trying to say is is people need to quit judging each other and being douchebags you know i don't judge anybody they can hunt however they want now if Mm -hmm. you're going out and you're you're being a poacher then you're just a pile of crap in my opinion but you just I feel like we all need to get on the same team and get unified. Yeah, and and like I I think I've said like three or four times it's I'm not judging. Like if no, you're efficient with this weapon and because the weapons become more efficient, I'm not right. judging you like you're right. You're using it. That's fine. Yeah. But it's just not for me. Right. Well, recurve hunters could judge the shit out of me. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm sure they do, but recurve hunters could judge the shit out of me. I could judge the shit out of a 1000-yard guy. Well, but I know what it takes I, to shoot a 1000 yards. I've yeah, I went it. from uh, holy crap, it's hard. I went from shooting recurve, recurve, recurve to I shot my buck last year at almost sixty yards. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, with a compound, with a compound. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I could judge myself. Yeah, I mean, you could. Yeah, you piece of shit. Yeah, my recurve was there, <laughs> but you should, yeah, you could have been one of those guys that takes a picture with his be- with his buck with a recurve. Could have. I was there by myself. Yeah, I could have no, easily no, just no. throw my recurve against it and said, yeah. "Oh, twelve yards." <laughs> nope. We were pushing 60. No one would so, ever been the wiser. Oh, you ruined that opportunity. Yes. I was going to say, I should have done that. I so, think about it. <laughs> so I, I guess if if you were going to have somebody that was asking you, where do you draw the line, how would you help them draw their own line? Like, what would be the advice that you would give to somebody that's like, dude, I, I just don't know if hunting with the compound is good for me anymore or hunting with the rifle is good for me anymore. Just just that. Just whatever, whatever does it for you. Hmm. Um, if you're fully like really sat, you know, like you get excited and jacked up every time you shoot an animal at 500 yards to do it. I would get jacked up if I shot an animal at 500 yards. Um, it's, and I'm it's, talking it's, with a rifle. Yeah. Um, it's the, it's the 100 to 400 yards that I'm not excited about. Cause that's just, yeah. Uh, you but know. you know what I mean? Like, and, and if that's not really doing it for you, okay, try a bow. Right. And then you get to a point with a bow where, okay, I'm shooting animals at 50, 60, sometimes 30 but you know further out it's just kind of like just filling a tag and i'm done right 
go to something hard. Just make it harder as you go along, I guess. Like mm. the more you go along and the less satisfied you are with things, just make it harder because then you'll get that back of, okay, I made it harder on myself and I still got it done. Well, you're, you don't, then like we already touched on this earlier, that doesn't have to be gear. That could be a different time of year. That mm-hmm. could be a better quality animal. That could be a different state. That could be a backpack hunt versus just road hunting. That could be, mm-hmm. you know, there's so many different facets to it that. Yeah, you could take the same weapon that. Take the rangefinder out of the deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, take the same weapon and hunt during uh, January or even rifle hunting. If you like shooting stuff further, and it kind of makes you, I guess, almost this is more of an ethics problem here, but if you like shooting stuff at like 500 yards with a rifle, mm-hmm. well, you said take the range finder out of it and do the same, do the same <laughs> job. Good luck. Yeah. Good like uh, um, that bear I shot with you this last year. Yeah. Uh, if that would have been for a range finder, I would have missed that thing by a country mile. <laughs> <laughs> my, the distance I had uh, in my head yeah. was nowhere near what that thing <laughs> actually was. So, uh, Well, then you had to deal with the angle compensation, with the, which the range finder gave. Well, with what I was going to shoot it for, I guarantee that bear wouldn't even stop. What would you have shot it for? Like maybe 400 yards. Oh, really? So I'm, Wasn't it like 500? It was like 550. 550. What I pulled like the trigger. 500 even with the angle. Yeah, so that bear probably wouldn't even stop feeding. He probably <laughs> just like, yeah, big boom over there. Cool. I, uh, kept going. So On Kim's big black deal, the first one she ever killed, only one she's ever killed, uh, I was shooting 1,000 yards like the day before Plankin. And so like, I dialed in the scope, and I think we were hitting probably 60 feet over that buck set. <laughs> <laughs> And so by the time I actually figured it out, I hit the zero stop, dialed it back, and then whap, whap. You know, I was like, <laughs> uh, you know, we were so far off, it wasn't even funny. Like, that buck didn't even care. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm like, why are you missing? <laughs> I'm like, I don't even see where your bullet's hitting. Yep. Oh, Hold it's on. It's a mile above it. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, I think we covered that topic pretty thoroughly. We did two shorter episodes. I think these are the shortest episodes we've ever done. Yeah. That yeah. I've ever been a part of, at least. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Yep. Get us out of here. I do got to get going to dinner. Oh, geez, you do too, geez. I think. Yeah, Shelby should be here any minute. So yeah. So uh, all right, guys. Well, hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Give us your feedback. What you know? Where do you draw the line? And what are you thinking is a crutch for you? And and identifying you know your setup and your hunts, the way that you hunt. What are some things that you can do to get more of an experience out of your next hunt? I mean, for me personally, I'm I'm probably one year away from hitting a trad. Mm-hmm. And then killing turkeys. I'm still not going to fully commit to using big game. Oh, God, I just don't care about turkeys. I'm willing to fail and fail miserably on turkeys because they just. I don't care. I bought a new compound this year, and I'm still not convinced that I won't be hunting with a recurve when season comes. Really? Yeah. I so. would be more excited for you if you used to recurve. Yeah, I just just because you have so much invested in it, time. I wouldn't be surprised if. Come this hunting season, yeah. I've got a recurve again. I, I hope you do. Maybe, maybe what I'll do is this year I'll, I'll kill a fall turkey with with a recurve. Because mm. that'd be pretty. I'm not gonna say easy, but that'd be shot opportunity would be easy. Mm-hmm. Maybe not killing it would be easy because you've seen me shoot a recurve. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right, guys. We'll appreciate you listening to this one. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. All right, guys, so what do you think? What do you think is in your gear setup or with what you have that may be preventing you from getting that, to that next level or becoming a better hunter? You know, Anthony brought up Onyx Maps, which was a good example of something that doesn't directly make you more accurate or more efficient with your setup. It doesn't make you perhaps put more animals on the ground because your gun can shoot farther, your bow can shoot farther or whatever, but it does probably present you more opportunities with animals if you know what you're looking for, know what you're looking at. So uh, that I wouldn't consider a crutch, but maybe a, uh, you know, a thousand yard gun or a compound bow, you could consider those crutches. And really to his point as well, you can consider anything a crutch. So I'm really interested in hearing your guys' feedback on, on what would you consider a crutch and what could you change as far as dynamics wise of, of, your hunt or your gear list to get a better experience or push yourself as a hunter. So uh, really excited to hear that because it was kind of uh, kind of an interesting conversation and I'm really just interested in hearing your guys' feedback. So as always, guys, appreciate you listening to the show and I will see you on the next one. Bye.